A stretch of eight straight days with measurable precipitation ended last Friday in Pittsburgh, last Saturday in State College, and seven day streaks ended on one of those days at most other Pennsylvania cities. Those streaks in the wet spring in general got me asking how common are such stretches of wet days in the Commonwealth. I'll look at streaks of days with measurable precipitation, that is at least one one hundredth of an inch of liquid each day. So I'm not counting days with a trace, say a brief shower or a few flurries. Including those days would mean longer streaks and more of them, but by ignoring trace days, we can focus on those stretches that really stick out as day after day of precipitation. I'll look at State College, which is a good bellwether for the higher terrain of the state without being overly influenced by lake effect, and Harrisburg, more representative of lower elevations east of the mountains. Now, since 1896, State College has had 54 streaks of seven days or longer with measurable precipitation, about one every two years or so on average. The longest streak was 14 days, and there's also been 12-day, two 11-day, and three 10-day streaks. Now, here's how those 54 streaks break down by the month when they began. May certainly jumps out as a preferred time with nearly twice as many as any other month. January is a distant second. Those streaks tend to include a couple days of lake effect. April and August are next highest in frequency, while the months of September through December stand out for having the least streaks. As for Harrisburg, I found 51 streaks of seven days or longer with measurable precipitation. That's since 1889. Again, about one every two years or so on average. The longest stretch there is just nine days. Remember, State College had several streaks of 10 or more days, which speaks to the role of the mountains in helping to produce precipitation. Here's how those 51 streaks break down by month in Harrisburg. May has the most, as in State College, but not by as big a margin. January is not as prominent now that we're farther from the lakes and prevailing winds are down sloping. But April and August still stand out, and so does September, partly due to the remnants of tropical systems moving up the coast. Now to kind of summarize things, I combined the streaks from the two places, adjusted for double counting, and then grouped the streaks by season, winter being December, January, February, summer, June, July, August, etc. Spring really sticks out with winter and fall the least common. Now spring's propensity for streaks of precipitation is due in large part to the frequency of cutoff lows, pools of cold air aloft that are remnants of winter's chill. They show up as pockets of green or blue on these charts from around 20,000 feet that will take us through our most recent rainy stretch that started back on May 14th. Watch that upper level cold pool as it ever so slowly headed east and then hung out for a few days over or near us, eventually moving out to sea last Saturday. Now some of us started another streak this week. Paul Knight will tell us whether it will last into the Memorial Day weekend next in the extended forecast.